Hey y'all, how is everyone? Well, I want to do a um, Bible study um, in our little, um, I guess, Bible study room. So it's a little bit different backdrop. I wanted to point out, because uh, some of you who follow me on my other channel, this was a gift from one of the gals from um, my Better Than Therapy uh, ladies group from high school. And it has... Um, this wonderful sentiment, it says, we are blessed with his light and his love. And it's this beautiful lantern, and I thought it was so pretty. I wanted it to be in our backdrop for today because um, we're talking today about Psalm 34.4. Four. Psalm 34.4. Four. Let me just read that to you. I sought the Lord, and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. And do y'all want to see what I wrote in my little, this is my little scripture writing notebook. Do you want to see what I wrote? Can I almost let it focus. Really? All of my fears? That's interesting to me. And yes, he can. And all of the causes of our fears. That's how he delivers you. Okay, so I wanted to look and read this. There's um, a note at the beginning in your Bible of um, Psalm 34 that says, Of David when he pretended to be insane before Abimelech and drove him away and he left. Now that's interesting that David was so desperate that he would pretend like that. And here he offers this prayer to the Lord. And I'm going to go back and forward in this. So I'm going to go back to one and I'm going to go forward all the way down Oh my gosh, I don't even know. I may just read this whole psalm. <coughs> so excuse me <clears throat> if I have a little bit of a cough there. Um, gosh, read 33 too. It's always good when you read a scripture to read what's in front of and in back of it. It helps you get context for what's going on. Um, and so I am going to go up one to Psalm 33, starting in verse 20. So if you want to put me on hold, get your little notebook out, get you a pen, and, and make yourself some notes. And remember to scripture write these, these out. And um, when you write down and journal, um, it triggers the brain to remember things better. It also will trigger you to think about things and pray about things. And what I do is throughout the week, I continue to keep this, you know, right by me each morning. And, uh, or evening or whenever it comes up. And I'll write additional thoughts about that same scripture throughout the week because how I feel about it today may be different what God's teaching me about that scripture tomorrow and day after day. So, and it'll be interesting. I always date it. Y'all forgive me if the dogs are barking because there are nine deer that cross through my yard and they're going ballistic. Plus there's two cats. It's just, a, a, it's an art. But this is, I always put the date there because next year when I look at this, I'm going to shut the door while I'm talking. Um, next year when I look at this, it'll be interesting to see what may have been going on and how I felt about it and how I'm going to feel about it in the future. And I'm also going to grab my little cup of coffee so that I can clear my throat for a second. Because I'm a little dried out. Okay. Um, so again, we're looking at Psalm 33, 20 through 22, and then it comes into Psalm 34. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In Him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in His holy name. Not just Him, His name. His name alone has power. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. What a great sentiment for us to think about this week, you guys. Now we're starting in Psalm 34. Verse 1, I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glorify in, I will glory, I'm sorry, I will glory in the Lord and let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Well, let's just do that. Let's just praise your name, God, together. We're so thankful for you, God. Oh my goodness. Lord, we're so thankful for you. We're so thankful for you. You're so gracious to us. Even when Peter, oh, not Peter, when um, David here was just kind of acting nutty, pretending to be insane, and he just must have had this desperateness about him. And Lord, we do stuff like that too. We just do crazy, stupid, 
things. And I just ask you, please forgive us. And we're so thankful for your mercy. We're so thankful for your great mercy in Jesus' name. I, I just had to pray. Okay. Okay, so let's, let's look at this verse. Verse 4. I sought the Lord and he answered me. For those of you who say, well, I pray, but God doesn't ever say anything back. Yes, he does. You stay in the word of God and he will come off this page to you. He will speak to you through his word. Um, he delivered me from all my fears. So that's quite a statement. David had a lot to be afraid of. He had armies of people after him. Okay. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you holy people, for those who fear him lack nothing. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Okay, do you see that a few things have happened now? You see God talking. You see an angel of the Lord also involved. That does not mean Jesus, by the way. Some people... And cults will say, well, that's Jesus. He's an angel. No, Jesus has an angel. The Revelation tells us that he has his own angel. I don't know which one it is, if it's even named. Maybe it's a different one all the time. But he has legions of beautiful, wonderful angels that love and adore him. And don't forget, Satan took with him a legion of angels, too, that hate God and, and are under the control of Satan. And so it is a war. Um... Anyway, so it says in verse 11, Come, my children, listen to me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their cry. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil to blot out their name from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all of their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and save those, saves those who are crushed in spirit. Now, what does all that mean? When you're crushed in spirit, when you are not um, full of yourself, that's when God can best use you. When you try to use your own strength, you're it's worthless. But when you admit you're weak before the Lord and ask for His strength, his strength is all-powerful. When you hear, by the way, when it says that the face of the Lord is against those who do evil, that does not mean that if you've done something wrong, that the Lord turns his face away from you, or if there's, if there's sin, that God's like uh, some weakling that can't even be in the presence of sin. He just... Now, does he? God is not okay with sin. He's not going to just abide with sin. But I don't want you to mistake that for the fact that, well, I've been too sinful. The Lord can't even look upon me. Y'all, he looks upon us sinners every day. We're full of sin every day, even though he's forgiven us. And we're in the forgiven state until we get to heaven and we are absolutely perfected and rid of this human fleshly body that causes us to continually sin. The state of sin that we are in has been forgiven us by the cross that Jesus Christ went and dumped our sin on. He dumped the sin in hell. And now we are forgiven because of what he did. Does that mean that you are absolutely sin-free? Well, in the future sense, yes, because all your sins are going to be forgiven. But you're still in the active now going to commit sins. And that doesn't mean God goes, Oh, I can't look at Beth because she has a sin. Please do not. Fester that around. I've heard preachers say that. I've seen people say um, that, that God turned his face away from Jesus at the cross because they were sin on him. God does not turn his face away from you because you have sin on you or you sin. That is when he grabs you and says, I can break this off of you. Turn to me. God never turns away from us. That is not what this says at all. When it says, but the face of the Lord is against it, that means he is not for sin. He is not for doing evil. He will never be okay with it. Does he love you? Yes. Does he love your sin? No. Can he deal with the fact that you're a sinner and be in your presence? Yes. Satan himself has gone into the throne room of God and said, remember with Job, he said, what about your servant Job? He was actually talking to God in his presence. 
He's the epitome full sin. So don't get confused about that, y'all. But this is the thing. A righteous person, that means a person whose heart is right towards God. And, and can you be that person on your own? No. The only reason you have any righteousness at all is the righteousness of Christ is applied to you when you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior from your sins, Savior from the wrath of God, and that you are now a work in Christ to the day you die, working against this flesh, that you are going to live out a life that you you are your stinking thinking is being transformed out of you. You're being cleansed. You have a mind to say, Lord, I want to change. You, will you able to change perfectly? No. God has to do it. He has to, and He knows how to do it differently for each person. That's why we can't judge each other. God's busy doing it differently in all of us. But um, and and when it says that God protects us and um, He listens to us, that means we won't have any more troubles. No. Jesus already said, hey, in this world, you're going to have a lot of trouble, but be of good cheer. I've overcome this world. This world is not where you focus. This world is not your home. Heaven is our home. Our focus is heavenward. Our hope is heavenward. And that is the ultimate fear, isn't it? Dying. Isn't that the ultimate fear? The suffering before dying. What about the suffering on the cross? Isn't that what our, stems our fears? We have lots of sources of fears. And what this is saying is, what David is saying is, God can deliver you of all of that. The, the sins themselves, the fears themselves, and the source of it all. Why? He doesn't even know why, what he's saying yet. This is the Lord speaking through David. Because of Jesus. Because he is sending this deliverer. He is sending this God on earth that will take all the sin on and save us from it. And so we don't have to be afraid anymore. Y'all trust in Jesus this morning and let go of those fears and ask God to do a work in you. And I'll talk to y'all again soon. I love you so much. Bye!